Moon Knight, Black Knight, Misty Knight, Werewolf by Night. Man, there are a lot of knights within the Marvel Universe. And of course, today we're going to be focusing on Moon Knight. And I'm sure all of us will be focusing on Moon Knight for the next six weeks as Disney Plus releases one episode each Wednesday. And I couldn't be more excited. The first episode just dropped this past Wednesday. And it was great. I highly recommend you check it out because we're going to be discussing spoilers as I review and break it down for you guys. I'm really excited to get into some more Marvel content on my channel. As you guys know, it's not really my typical content of choice, but I want to do more of it because it's such a great passion of mine. I feel like I have something to share. And so for Marvel fans, please check out my other Marvel videos. I've done a Doctor Strange trailer video. I've done top 10 characters along with some others that I'll have linked in the description and card suggestion pop up. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. I cannot wait to discuss episode one of Moon Knight. Now, it really is mind-boggling to me like how much Egyptian mythology that they've incorporated into this show, just like they do with the Norse mythology for all the Thor movies. And I just love that. Like They probably have a whole research team that probably even travels to Egypt to just do this. Like That's the job I want, just to come up with lore to incorporate into a Disney Plus series and the MCU in general. And then the other thing I want to say before we get a little bit more detail oriented here is that there is a ton of foreshadowing of that split personality between, of course, Stephen Grant and Mark Spector. Like, for example, when he's talking to that poser on the London Plaza, he literally says, I will see you on the flip flop. So a ton of stuff like that that just alludes to the divide in his personality that we obviously see more and more as the episode goes on. Now, of course, the episode starts off very mysteriously showing Arthur Harrow, who we know to be the villain, or at least that's who we think it is right now. He puts a bunch of glass shards in his shoes. Now, this is probably a blood sacrifice to Amit, who I'll talk about in a little bit here, to show his commitment to like this righteous cause or whatever he thinks he's doing. I'm sure all of his other goons who have the scale tattoos on their forearms. I'm sure they do something like that as well. And I'm sure Amit commands it of them. Now, Amit is like this deity, not necessarily a god, but a deity in this ancient Egyptian mythology, of course, associated with death. And then these scales of justice that, of course, Arthur uses to judge the people in the crowd there. And he ultimately tries to do the same thing with Stephen Grant. There's a ton of imagery surrounding Amit during the episode, who now, if you guys don't know, has a crocodile for a head. It's a crocodile, not an alligator, because crocodiles are native to Egypt, whereas I think alligators are only native to North America. Now, when Arthur confronts Stephen in the museum, you know, telling him about his whole thing and the whole shebang and all that stuff, which really gets lofty, like they really are into the lore here. Arthur takes his cane and all that, and he uses a little sway method on Steven. Again, we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but you can see a crocodile in the background on one of the pillars. The cane itself has a crocodile head. And then when Steven is lurking about the museum at night, you know, because he can hear like a dog, but he doesn't know it's like the evil dog yet, he passes a like what looks to be a wooden sculpture of a crocodile. I'm not sure if it's wooden, but it looked kind of wooden. So there's a ton of imagery, and it's just like, foreshadowing and foreboding like it's going to happen like I would not be surprised if we see a mitt in full CGI form actually show up during the show at a later point because I do believe that like Kanchu who is the Egyptian moon god has attached himself to Mark Spector I think a mitt has attached herself to Arthur Harrow here and the whole idea I think is that she is trying to have a human form or have some sort of tangible participation within the earthly world so she can start killing people. And right now she's just able to do it through Arthur Harrow with the little scales there and how he sucked the life out of that one woman. And of course, again, you know, we'll get into some of this other stuff here as this video goes on. Now, I love how the scales literally flash 
from green to red like a stoplight i thought that was really weird like i'm mostly not sure if i like it or not like i know i just i love it but like it was a really bold choice <laughs> And it's like, hmm, do they really like use green and red as like good and bad back in Egyptian mythology? I don't know. But either way, it shakes uncontrollably for Stephen Grant because there's a couple interpretations for this. Like I've heard a couple of people talking like somebody has said that it was shaking and it wasn't able to make a decision because Mark Spector actually died. So this is gets into some story. Obviously, we haven't seen the episode yet or the show yet, but I believe and a lot of people do that. Mark Spector actually dies. And it's kind of like Ghost Rider, if you guys know his backstory, in that Johnny Blaze dies and makes a deal with the devil and then is able to come back as Ghost Rider with the catch that, you know, he turns into like a flaming skull and all that. So this is kind of similar. Mark Spector dies and then kind of signs off his body to Kanchu. So Kanchu's kind of controlling him now. Kanchu can bestow some of his will upon him in a way and I'm sure we'll see more of this as the episodes continue on and so what I'm trying to get across here is that he died already and that is why the scales were not able to make a decision for him now that was not my initial intuition I personally thought because he has like all these personas within him you know Stephen Grant Mark Spector that we know of, of course, he has, you know, the Moon Knight, which is Mark Spector and all that. He also is kind of Kanchu living within him. Like there's so much going on within him. And Arthur even says like there's chaos in you. And so I thought maybe that's why the scales were not able to make a decision. Like they just confused the heck out of Amit, I guess, who is ultimately behind the scenes here. But so either way, <laughs> thankfully he didn't die there which honestly I was kind of surprised that Stephen let Arthur do the ritual on him but it just goes to show how feeble-minded he is and I think this sets up a change in his character that we'll eventually see and how he'll eventually work together with Mark Spector because obviously there's a lot of tension right now and we've seen in the trailer that there will be more tension as Stephen tries to learn what Mark Spector is and I'll get into this later. I know I keep saying that, but like there's so much to talk about. And I love that they're kind of telling the story through Stephen Grant's perspective and not Mark's because Mark would just be like a typical, a much more stereotypical Marvel hero, whereas Stephen's entirely different. So it's a very bold decision to do that, though. But I think it's going to ultimately pay off. But I do want to see a little bit of Mark for sure. Now, I do sense that this tension could become problematic because obviously there's like a little pre-established relationship between Steven and Arthur. Arthur has a little bit of charm to him. He literally says in the show he's trying to help Steven. Obviously, he's BSing, but there, there's that charm to him there. I think that this will eventually allow him to manipulate Steven once Arthur learns that this mercenary that he's been dealing with has a split personality. He knows that the mercenary is actually Mark and that's whenever his guys get killed, it's Mark. And he knows he's going to find out that whenever he's just talking to the guy and whenever he has that silly accent, it's Steven Grant, right? And he knows that Steven is more weak-minded and he might try and manipulate him, offering liberation from Mark so he can continue or live his own life uninterrupted and this would then like sabotage Mark and Kanchu's goal eventually. Now I do want to briefly talk about the dog. So the dog is like this pawn of Anubis so getting into more mythology here. Anubis is the Egyptian god of the dead. Unlike Amit though this one has a jackal for a head which is like I guess it's like a dog, but like kind of a coyote hyena mix. <laughs> and so this dog that attacks Steven is like a monstrous version of an African jackal. And we know Moon Knight will fight more of them in the series because we saw a scene of like a one of them jumping toward Moon Knight. And then we also saw Arthur releasing them from whatever realm that they were trapped in. So maybe that's going to be a part of a flashback when they're in like that Egyptian monument. So lots of stuff going on here. And we obviously will have to travel to the past for some of this, hopefully episode two. So again, like I said, it was very bold for them to tell this story, especially the entirety of episode one from the perspective of Stephen Grant, which I feel like many of us would say would be the more boring I don't want to say boring but just the not as exciting like as Marvel fans you know we love action we love people just being gritty right we love that but 
that's not who Stephen Grant is. And so I think, again, like I said, to tell the story from Grant's perspective is super bold and they committed to it. They literally cut out every scene with Mark Spector and we just kept getting teased on and on again. Whenever he would switch to Mark Spector, it would cut out. You wouldn't get to see him take out the bad guys. You would just see the bad guys laying there in a bloody <laughs> pile. And so I thought that was great. And I think maybe in the next episode, we'll see those scenes that were cut out, but maybe not. Maybe they'll just show some of them. Maybe they won't show any of them, right? Maybe they'll do a similar time jump here where a similar episode where they cut out all of Steven's scenes, but it just moves forward in the timeline. I'm not really sure, but super interesting to think about what's going to go on. Now, Mark clearly went out to buy a new goldfish after the first one died, as fish usually do when they aren't taken care of for several days. And that's obviously because Mark went on this little trip to steal the scarab beetle, <laughs> which apparently I think Arthur wants to release a myth to the real world. Now, Conchu's in his head, of course, not actually in the elevator or outside the bus or anything like that, but I really am looking forward to getting a better look at him. Great voice selection. I thought he sounded great. And yeah, I just can't wait to see him, you know, on screen for more than like a split second because really he was super hidden. And then I also wanted to mention that the director and just the creators did a great job depicting mental health challenges during this episode, Oscar Isaac does a fantastic job acting. You can see the confusion and the defeat in his eyes when he realizes he missed his date. And then presumably he starts lying to his mom on the phone there. I think he was leaving a voicemail because, you know, there's no pauses for her to talk. I mean, I would presume this is his mom because it seemed like that more personal connection. And also how he said that he'll bring her around sometime, which is something you would say to your parents. And... That also brings up the question, who is Stephen Grant's mom? If we're assuming that the Stephen Grant personality just came about when Mark Spector died and then became Moon Knight and Stephen Grant was like a symptom or a complication of the Moon Knight transformation, then does Stephen Grant's family even exist? Or maybe Stephen Grant's personality like this existed before the whole Moon Knight transformation. So again, more questions that we'll hopefully get answers for very soon. This other weird aspect that I found was that Steven doesn't remember asking Dylan, so the girl that they were going to go on the steak date with, he doesn't remember asking her out. So it must have been Mark, right? But why would Mark ask her out when he has this thing going on with Layla? Now, maybe he's just trying to protect Layla. He doesn't want to have anything to do with her because he knows that he's Moon Knight now, you know, kind of like how some vigilantes do. They push away everyone like Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man did in Spider-Man 2. Or maybe they're just friends. Like we're all assuming their romantic relationship, <laughs> but I don't know. I would assume they are. I mean, she literally called him like 20 times and she had still been calling him even though they'd been separated for two months. Like she probably, like if that was me, I probably would have assumed like he's dead or something. I would not be constantly calling, but yeah, that shows some commitment. And then there's just this one little crazy theory I have that actually was Jake Lockley's persona that asked Dylan out on the date, like a third one from the comics, who's the taxi cab driver. But a lot of people have been saying that they are not including that persona in this show. And it's just, you know, Stephen Grant and Mark Spector. So we'll see, but I just really can't find an explanation for why Mark would ask out another girl. And I really can't wait to see Mark's side of this as well. Like I'm sure Oscar Isaac will do another phenomenal acting job. Like he's basically playing two characters here, you know, two completely different accents, two completely different personalities, because he's got to be upset that he's missed out on a part of his life with Layla if, you know, they are indeed romantic partners. And that is pretty much it for my whole breakdown and review. I thought it was a great episode. I thought it was a little slow, but really I thought it was masterfully done. Like again, bold decision to show Steven entirely in the first episode, but I think it's a powerful one that will eventually strengthen the show. And there was also excellent music choice. You know, of course, those retro songs were phenomenal. So thank you guys so much for watching my first episode breakdown for Moon Knight. And I will hopefully be back for episode two next week. If you guys, you know, show support, if you guys are enjoying this, then I will continue to do more breakdowns of the episodes. All right, guys, bye now.